my friends, and welcome to episode 49, year two of the Kiss Army Nation podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Pasquale Verri. And I am Claudio Espera. Welcome to the show, everyone. Our guest tonight is uh, widely known in the music world for his impressive books on Kiss and his outstanding work for Universal as a vinyl catalog consultant. So his deep love of vinyl and understanding of the collector's world inspired him to start his own label. And since kicking into gear, they've issued exclusive vinyl records by Ace Freely and Bruce Kulick. So his latest limited edition vinyl releases are Recology by late uh, Kiss drummer Eric Carr and Peter Chris's solo album, uh, albums actually, uh, following his departure from Kiss. So please, Let's give a warm welcome to our dear friend, Tom Shannon. Welcome to the show, Tom. Hey, guys. Thank you all for having me. Appreciate it very much. Tom, really, you have no idea how excited I am to have you on the show. First of all, I want you to know that you are the first guest of our second year of the Kiss Army Nation podcast. Well, and awesome. what a great way to start a new year, man. I can't believe it's uh, our second year already. And what a way to celebrate that. That's an impressive number of, of episodes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank and you. I'm equally excited. Um, it's funny. We're doing this interview today. It's February uh, 16th. And guess what arrived in the mail today? Oh, just today. It Look just arrived that. today. So uh, uh, I got, I got uh, the black vinyl and the green. The black. I mean, the oh, green okay. and the black, uh, man. So... After the show, Beautiful. I'm going to get myself evicted because I am going to blast this stuff nice and loud that way it's meant to be heard. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Nice, good pressings, y'all. You really enjoy them. Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait. And, you know, we're going to talk more about the, uh, the Peter Chris uh, pressings. But before we do that, Tom, um, we want to know a little bit more about who is Tom Shannon. Um, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself and how you got into KISS. Okay, man, that's that's a long story. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to be, you know, I'll try to be a little, little, little quick with it. Uh, so, uh, you know, luckily for myself, so as as uh, as a teenager in 1976, I was 16. So, you know, as Kiss was arching up, I was I was in the the, the group that they were aimed at. You know, they uh, they weren't aimed at kids. They, you know, uh, they they kind of had left the, the the rougher part of their their image behind and. And so, you know, I, I was just there, a kid of the 70s, and, and I was very much a typical uh, American teenager. Uh, yeah, I can't get into a whole lot of stuff, but very typical, you know, played <laughs> sports, uh, you know, uh, enjoyed just doing things as, 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 as kids do. Uh, my background's a little bit unusual. Uh, I played on the football team, but I was also in the orchestra, played the oh. violin for mm. uh, forever. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, that was interesting, too. You know, it's, it's one of those things where you, you learn to make choices in life, and it's weird how you go, because I actually was given a directive by the, the orchestra director that I had to decide if I was going to play sports or, or play the violin. So I sold my violin and started lifting weights. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> uh, so I got to observe a lot of, of, of KISS in the 70s, but there's a lot of stuff I missed out on because I was in high school on the football team. Uh, you know, missed out on Phantom of the Park. I may not have just wanted to watch that. I'm not sure, but I know the Paul Lynn Halloween special. Man, I, I was tied up, didn't get to see it. Uh, no reruns and stuff then. So, um, and you know, also I live in the center part of the country, and um, um, you know, there, there, there basically was not a lot of the, the merchandising and promotion. Of, of all bands you know it just wasn't happening around here so you know i really didn't become aware of kiss until uh that would be about 1970 late 75 early 76 i think destroyer was getting ready to come out and believe it and i, I, I put this in my first book that, that i wrote uh, believe it or not, first image i remember of kiss was uh their logo and it was it was a uh, a hand uh you know like a, a spray can painted logo on a wall on the back of a very expensive shirt of the girl that was in front of me in the orchestra. I basically uh -huh. had to look at that, you know, all the time. <laughs> and I was like, well, what is that? You know? And so I finally asked some people and they, they told me what it was. I'm like, okay, right, I'll check that out. Uh, so uh, my very first Kiss concert uh, was March 7th, I believe, 1977. 
Uh, it was the third concert in brand new Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, 24,000 seat arena. Uh, and man, this is how things, the story changes all through time here. Okay. So, so I ended up in second row, uh, uh, right oh, in front wow. of Gene. And, uh, man, I had to camp out for those tickets. You know, I think we were there like six hours something like that, oh. because nobody did that then, you know, it's a brand new arena. Nobody knew to camp out and stuff. So those, that six hour wait for the kiss tickets turned into like four and five day waits a couple of years later, you know, uh, man, I wish that was the way it was now. Cause I could pay a kid to go down there and do that and get good <laughs> tickets, you know? But anyway, so uh, uh, I go, you know, I, I go uh, uh, as, as, as a young teenage boy does. I thought I'd need to take a date. And, uh, you know, I really wish I hadn't. But anyway, I did. And uh, I enjoyed the concert <laughs> anyway. And the bottom line of that, man, when they came on, I stood up on my chair. Everybody was standing up, even though I was on second row. And it had to be been the loudest thing I've ever heard because uh, – I mean, I could feel stuff running in my ears, you know, wow, wow. And, and it was just like, whoa, I mean, it just went into me. So, you know, I, I can still recall telling my dad the next night, oh, yeah, man, you know, I was, I said, he didn't spit blood on me, but it was close. And he goes, you know, something along the lines of, how foolish are you? You actually want somebody spit on you. Um, you know, <laughs> well, you don't understand, you know. So, uh, you know, just blown away by everything at that point. I mean, I'm, I'm taking it in audio, visual, the whole deal. And, you know, I think for me, uh, I thought about this quite a bit. I think for me, what what really attracted me to Kiss was as a kid, as a teenager, somebody that's dreaming. That could have been me up there instead of Ace Fraley. You know, mm -hmm. and didn't know what who he was behind his makeup. You know, right? Uh, you know, it's it could have been anybody, and and it just something about that mystique. You know. And uh, I was hooked pretty, pretty hard and pretty quick. Actually, more so than what I thought. I, I found this the other day. Uh, this, this was my high school thesis that I did on the rise from obscurity of a major, major rock undertaking kiss. Oh, cool. So that's, I did yeah. that. I did that in 1978. It's not too bad. You know, I started off bad to begin with. Uh, I, I misspelled the teacher's name, so that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I was I was pretty well hooked in the kiss, you know. And again, uh, again, 1978, man, I'm 18, you know. It's, things are starting to change in Tom's life a little bit, you know. Starting to, starting yeah. to you know, I, uh, the very next year uh, when I was 19, I found my wife. We've been together for 43 years or whatever. Wow. Uh, but, uh, you know, so your, your priorities change in life, man. That's, that's straight up the truth. As the band was changing, it's, you know, uh, appearance, it's sound and everything. Yeah. Um, so again, I went to an initial concert in 77. I was very fortunate. Uh, I never sat outside of the second row, uh, at any kiss show in Lexington until, until creatures of the night, uh, at the dynasty show. So I'm, I'm 19, man. I, I walk yeah. in there. There's freaking kids everywhere. I mean, little kids. Yeah. You know, and I Families. hear people, I hear people say that there were little kids. Oh, I was in the kiss when I was 12 in 1976. I didn't see you at that concert. Then. Exactly. Okay. There were no kids around. I mean, there may have been a handful, but there was no kids. And look, man, 1979, that's not, that's not today. You did different yeah. things at concerts then. Yeah, that's where they lost everybody, man. Right. Uh, four or five months after that's when I met my wife. So that's, okay. you know, we went to concerts and stuff. I mean, I'm a guy that uh, before we got together, I mean, concerts were, were cheap in the seventies. I mean, I've got, I've got stubs for over a hundred shows that I went to, you know, is mm -hmm. every night there was a show. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you know, it's just not that way anymore. And it was starting to get expensive and now we're getting married. So we got no money. We're both making $4 an hour, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so your priorities change. So as I told you, you know, I think before we started this, you know, I, I, I didn't initially purchase Unmasked. I saw it in store and just kind of kept on going, you know? And, and in fact, I thought it was really stupid. The, the final panel on that cover. I know we all laugh about it now, mm -hmm. but you know, th that's the way people felt about them at the time. Right. You know, I still yeah. say they stink, you know, I didn't think they stunk, <laughs> but a lot of other people did. That seemed like a dumb thing to put on your record, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, 
So it gets even worse than that. So, you know, I'm, I'm really not buying stuff by the time the elder comes out. All right. And, and, uh, you know, I don't have regrets in life. You know, you just can't do that. Uh, but would there be decisions you'd make a little bit different? Yeah, yeah, probably so. Maybe if I even could. So, uh, uh, I bought it. I bought the elder just because I felt like I should. You know? The opening, I, I mentioned some of your uh, early projects, you know, linked uh -huh. uh, to the band. Um, you know, Pask and I, we were huge fans of, of Kiss books. And, and yep. you did publish books on Kiss vinyl yep. and, and, and collectibles. So can we, can we take a tour on the books that you released and uh, what's uh, your favorite and why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and in fact, I'll, I'll take you on a quick tour of it. Uh, so this was the last Kissaholics thing I was going to show. Okay. This, this is the day that I knew I was going to write a Kiss book. <laughs> this was a Nashville, Tennessee convention that Gary Conn Jr. put on with, uh, I believe, Phil Elliott. They had and done the very first, you know, Kiss Collectibles book that I was aware yeah. of. And so it had been a couple of years. And so, you know, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, well, they're probably going to put one out now. And, uh, you know, like I say, I, 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 I really had an affinity for price guides and stuff. Um, it, it's just a weird quirk I've got. And I tore up my thumb when I was a plumber and was off work for three months. I spent every day in the library and I was going over all these price guys. They just, it just, I don't know, just liked them, you know? Yeah. Oh, I've got uh -huh. that and this. Oh, I wonder how they came up with that price and all that. And so, like I said, I'm just really super interested at that point. And uh, so I'm walking around the exhibit and I see a Kiss Mobile poster. And of course, you guys yeah. know Kiss, Kiss Mobile is yeah. a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had seen. You know, one just like it in their book. It was signed and everything. And I don't, I don't know who the, the dealer was, but I said, did they sign all those like that? I said, that looks just like the one that was in their book. And he goes, oh, it is the one from their book. And I said, what are you doing with it? He said, well, they're, they're divorced. They had to sell their collection. And, you know, I mean, that's sad. But I'm sitting there thinking in my head, they're divorced. Uh, they're never going to write another book together. That's not happening. That's right. I, I might as well go ahead and write my book. You know, I'm weird like that, guys. I've, I, wow. have, I, have, <laughs> that I, have, I, I have backed away from projects when I found out somebody else was doing one because I don't want to interfere right. with it. I had just started my own plumbing company. I was working as a plumber at a hospital at nighttime and doing my business in the daytime, which was not doing a lot of business. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to write this book when I've got downtime. And uh, so I just made up a template of different things that I would want to describe. <clears throat> and I got my stuff out. <laughs> I, started, I, started, I started filling out the page, you know. And, uh, and then I went and I got all my mail out. I still got all that mail from back in the day, you know. And I mean, big stacks. And it's got... Mm -hmm. It's got all the Japanese LPs. It's got values, you know, what people are paying. And, and that's, that's how that thing came together. That's why I try to be extremely generous with credits, man, because, you know, I can't just do this by myself. It, you know, this of kind of stuff has to yeah, come. Yeah. I'm much. just compiling stuff and making it easy for people to digest. That's really all I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I start doing that, I start doing that, you know, and I, I've got my computer, I've got it. I'm, I'm talking about it. And so uh, finally I decided, uh, I'm going to do a page count on this. And, uh, it was, I don't know, 500 pages. I said, well, I'm done. <laughs> you know, honestly, it was that easy. That is the hardest thing for most people to do is to put it into the project. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing. I don't have any issue with it. I have no problem making a decision. I don't care how hard it is. I just make it and we're going to go on. But, you know, a lot of people just don't. And so that's why, you know, they just can't ever get that book finished. They just can't ever get that record finished. So I, I didn't have that problem. Uh, the very first publisher I shipped it, I sent it to, sent the proposal to Krause Publications. They bought it and uh, they, they, they bought it on a royalty deal, which was, you know, it was, it was cool, but okay. then again, it was, it was a hindrance at the end of it. Uh, <clears throat> because so, uh, you know, I mean, I'll just tell people, people should know this. I would assume the percentages are still the same now. You know, I got 5% of retail is what I got per book. Okay. Okay. You know, 24, 24 bucks a piece. So 
you know, you can kind of work that out yourself. And so the way the contract worked, if I wanted to do another book, they had to have, uh, it's like only 200 copies in stock or something. <clears throat> so it got towards the end of it and I was ready to do my own, but I was ready to self publish then, you know, for the second book, I was going to do it myself. It, it, to me, why would I take it to a publisher so I can get 5% of it? I know everybody that's going to sell the book. And that's literally what happened. They, they sold the book literally through the, you know, the, the regular kiss stuff. And uh, so I'm like, well, I don't need to pay them. So, uh, uh, you know, started writing again. I mean, I was writing immediately after the first one was, was finished. And uh, you talk about night and day. So, you know, credibility, that's, that's something that people need to try to obtain and they try to earn it. Um, you know, because I got zero help on that first book. Nobody mm -hmm. helped me with anything. Mm -hmm. And all these manufacturers were sending me uh, samples and stuff for the second book. Uh, you know, I got all kinds of nice stuff from Gibson guitar, big ace, you know, standy and all. I mean, I would, I started getting a really cool collection, you know, because I started getting samples and stuff from people. So, uh, uh, anyway, uh, I wrote the second book, uh, and, and, you know, about two years later and, you know, proposed it again, they weren't interested in it. Uh, I had to propose it to them again because there still was stock in inventory. Uh, right after we, you know, decided that, you know, we weren't going to do anything with it. I, I arranged for all that inventory to be sold to somebody because it was, it was keeping me prisoner there, you know? And, uh, so did that. I ended up signing the majority of those books for those guys. And, uh, and lo and behold, about a year later, uh, it wasn't Krause. It was a company that brought, bought Krause, which, you know, I guess I could have shown the gold mine book, couldn't I? This, this is the gold mine kiss collectibles price guide. This is the first book that, that, you know, I, I wrote, I uh, can't say I published it and all that, but, uh, this, this book ends up having, uh, an interesting, uh, um, uh, part in history later on mm -hmm. because this book, and I wasn't aware of it at the time was used to rebuild the kiss LP catalog in 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So I get, I get after, you know, I get rid of the, the other inventory and all that. And I go and check to see how much it's going to be to, uh, to, you know, to get it printed. And I'll tell you today, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think twice what the price that they gave me. But at the time there was a sense, I mean, there's the internet, but essentially not. I mean, I, I think I sold them on the internet and it was a struggle. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, so, uh, they, they contact me about wanting to put out something called a kiss field guide. They, they had a, yeah. a line yeah. of these. and the idea was you stick that in your back pocket when you're at the flea market or whatever. Yeah, it wasn't a bad idea. And I'm going to tell you this thing actually got a ton of stuff in it, ton of information, oh, yeah. uh, but I'm so disappointed about this thing because what I had, and again, I, you know, I have to edit myself. If I don't edit myself, they're going to edit in a way they don't like it. The book was 10 times. I don't mean physically. I mean the, the number of entries. It was 10 times this size. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Massive. Massive. I mean, everything was in there. Yeah, it was literally everything because at that point, the internet was so new, you could keep up with what was coming out. Kiss so who, who decided what to cut? <clears throat> I did. Okay. They, they told me how much space I could have. Okay. okay. That's, that's just the way it goes, man. And, you know, I did as much as I could to combine, um, you know, entries and stuff, but Must there's a tough. lot just didn't make it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. but what was, what's my favorite part of this? That's, I got to interview Bill of Coin hmm. for this book. And, and, you know, that, it was, uh, it was special for me, you know, uh, you know, I mean, I got a lot of stuff answered that, you know, I, I had never thought about. He was super nice, was very accommodating. Um, you know, Keith LaRue, uh, arranged for that. And, uh, you know, Keith's always been really good mm -hmm. with supporting the stuff that I do. I don't know why, but he mm -hmm. has been. So anyway, that was, that was special for me. I, I sent Bill the, uh, the, the exact, text of what I was going to do. I mean, I cleaned up my ums and ahs and all that. It was amazing. I really didn't have to clean anything for him. He's so professional, you know, and, but I wanted him to see exactly what I was going to write. 
And I sent mm-hmm. that to him. And, you know, he sent that back to me. He signed it and sent it back to me. Nice. I mean, you know, yeah, it was. It was nice. It was like, Love man, you know, I wouldn't have even thought to do that. I mean, yeah. it was super kind of him. So, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about how you started the Rockologists? Yeah, well, I'd previously, like I said, been working with Kiss My Wax and, you know, left there and mm-hmm. uh, uh, wanted my own home, you know, where, where people could could share different things. So uh, I started, uh, uh, man, yeah, I'm trying to remember which one I started first. Uh, I did start the Rockologist group itself later. Uh, the Rockologist Facebook group, it, it's for any any music act at all. Mm-hmm. you know we get a lot of 70s rock stuff in there a lot of promo stuff promo displays and stuff and uh you know we're gonna see more out of that facebook group as things go on okay. um the um <clears throat> but let's see i'm trying well let me see here so the first one was i guess it was the, the rockologist kiss archives and basically it was to discuss anything kiss related that people wanted to you know and uh, uh, that was our meat and potatoes group, you know, that, that really was what the foundation of rest of this was on. I mean, we jumped to 5,000 members pretty quick, but we've held pretty steady since then. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, uh, Mike Stone, I have the same group of admins in, in all my groups. Okay. okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a group of guys that, you know, we all are like-minded. We're spread across the world. So there's always somebody up. You know, uh, uh, we've got Frank that's in, in Australia, we've got Tim that's in, in Europe. Uh, somehow or another, we've got uh, Tom Daniels and Mike Stone both in the state of Missouri. I don't know how that happened, but, and then uh, we got Mike Laird and man, I know I'm forgetting somebody, Rick Reese. Rick Reese is also helping us these days. You know, I, I'm, I was in there constantly, you know, sharing information, learning information. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's something that I enjoyed, but, you know, it's more, I really wanted to get something set up so, you know, it's sustainable. And, you know, when I say sustainable, I don't mean, you know, energy savings and stuff. I mean, can go on without me being involved in it, you know, as one of the reasons why when Mike Stone brought up, he wanted to do the, uh, the rockologist kiss vinyl vault. And, uh, and I was really happy about it because, okay. uh, uh, you know, I don't have time for this. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, Mike, he's amazing. He's, uh, there's, there's, uh, you have to have, for me, you have to have a certain mindset about how you look at something and go, is this a variant or not? You know, and, and it has to all be logical. And a lot of times it's not, but Mike, Mike absolutely shares that same thought process. So, you know, I, I think, I think, you know, Mike probably be working with me for a long time. So that, uh, that's that's how you guys came up with the with the vinyl label, right? So you started yeah. it off, you know, yeah. just yeah. okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So so did that, uh, and then you know they started about wanting to have a buy and sell trade group. So we set one up. I, I personally am not in there. I, we just offer that as you know something for people to connect on. Um, again, it's actually it's pretty amazing. Not that it won't pop up every now and then, but man, there is hardly any fraud in these groups like this, you know, because yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. knows who everybody is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you yeah, know, we, we, we're just, we're just trying to create, you know, different avenues for sharing information. So, uh, the newest one that I've got coming and everybody, if you want, if you want to be involved in this, uh, you need to go to my rockologist group on Facebook and make a comment in the comment section. I'm starting an auction group, uh, at my group. It's, it's my stuff. You know, we got weird auction laws in the States for the time. Being. <laughs> no, it, no. We do. It'll all be mine initially, but I'll probably have to bring an auctioneer on with me too, because, okay. uh, you know, I'm going to tell you this stuff. I've been attempting to downsize my collection for two years and I'm having no luck, man. And, you know, it's, it's scary when you think about that with oh, well. your spouse having to deal with that because yeah. my yeah. wife is not going to deal with this stuff. She's right. just not. I mean, she's told me, you know, and I mean, she'll probably get it somewhere would it be a good, good auction where if I go before I get rid of it, but you know, man, you don't want to see that. I mean, there was, I forget the gentleman's name is Charlie something. Uh, uh, Tom, he, let me ask you, is the, uh, is the auction going to be focused on, on mainly on vinyl or, or any collectibles? So it's going to hey, be, yeah, any and everything, okay. any and everything. Mm-hmm. And in fact, in fact, like I say, the first one's going to be on the 25th. I'll probably send, when I send out the, the invites and stuff, I'll, I'll probably ask people to, you know, what do you want to see? 
Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I mean, you know, again, this place looks horrible, man. <laughs> God, <laughs> you know, I've got clean here. It's just too tight. But man, I got everything in the world here. This may just be me on Friday nights doing this, or you know, uh, if if somebody's trustworthy enough because they got it. You know, we're, it's not going to be the wild. You're working on it. It's just not. Yeah. We're not going to. Yeah, everybody's not going to get to sell. We're not. We're not doing this to you know raise fees or something like that. That's right. not what it's about. Right. Right. And you know the other part of that too is yeah, I'm I'm guaranteeing there's going to be no counterfeits sold here. I mean, it's just not mm-hmm. happening. And now that you're you're talking about counterfeit, so I, so correct me if I'm wrong, but when you started off, you know, the recologist the vinyl label, mm-hmm. there seemed to be a, a kind of a close connection to Ace Freely and Bruce Kulig. You know, with those two albums that you guys released. So yeah. can you explain uh, what was the connection with uh, with Ace and Bruce? Well, yeah, uh, you know, um, so Bruce, uh, I had met Bruce years and years ago uh, when I was interviewing him for my second book <laughs> on on guitar picks. In fact, uh-huh. the wedding the wedding picks that's in there came from Bruce, and uh, you know, and we 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 you know didn't we didn't make a connection or anything like that. And uh, so when when I was working with Universal on the 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 kiss you know lp reissues we, we got to carnival souls and man there's there's no promotional materials for that thing you know and so what happened with a lot of the a lot of the jackets was they found we found i found somebody found promo posters oh and shrunk them down you know you can you can you can shrink down and and, and make things look great but you can't blow them up now mm-hmm. i will tell you after after you know what uh dale benson the guy that restored these peter chris jackets did yeah i can tell you you can make some great jackets from a scan i I mean these things are are perfect but anyway at that point we're trying to find anything to make that that front jacket in the back and all that and you know there was there was there were promo posters that were out there uh, I went to Kiss Fact and and my Facebook groups and was asking, does anybody have this thing? You know, mm-hmm. and uh, and we weren't able to get them up. Uh, and so a guy uh, named Michael Edwards got a hold of me over there, and he said, Well, I know Bruce, and uh, you know, uh, I can probably set you up, and talk to him, and and see what he's got. I know he's got some stuff. And uh, turns out Michael and I are really good friends now. It's the first time we met. Uh, and, uh, uh, Michael, Michael is, is, uh, uh, is Bruce's archivist. Okay. Okay. He, he, he maintains everything for Bruce. He does all of Bruce's videos. So super talented guy. Uh, really great guy. Anyway. Uh, so he introduces me to Bruce. And so, you know, we start talking and, you know, just kind of this, that, this, and that. And ultimately they, they ended up finding a source and of course, you know, a lot of people complained about Carnival Souls because they didn't do anything nice with it. But, you know, it wouldn't have looked nice when they released it. It just wouldn't mm-hmm. have. They, they mm-hmm. wouldn't have spent a dime on it. And so it's pretty accurate the way it is. But anyway, so there you go. So now I, I know Bruce Cooley. Okay. And I have, you know, con- professional contact information. So forget all that, you know. And, and so I'm sitting there. I don't know. I can't remember how far in advance it was, but uh, I, I was laying in the pool. I've got an above ground pool, get at Walmart. Uh, I was laying in that pool <laughs> and I got this, I got this bright idea for a TV show. I'm not going to share that because I'm, I'm still probably maybe going to do that sometime, but it, that's what all this started over was this idea for a TV show. So okay. I'm sitting there and I'm going, well, with what I'm wanting to do, I, I got books, you know, I'm writing another book right now, man, I need some other stuff, you know? And, and, and so I, I made the decision then that the books were going to be massive. Okay. I was going to cover it all before that I was going to edit it. Okay. But I just thought they'd look cool slamming them down on video, you know, for the show. So I decided (laughs) to do the whole blown thing. And, uh, and then I'm sitting there thinking, I, I, man, you gotta have a, you gotta have a guest host. You gotta have a guest host. And so, uh, because who, who cares about me? <laughs> and, and it was really weird. It was really weird. Uh, my first initial thought was, and I don't know why I even want to said this. Uh, it was, uh, oh man, I bet they stick Sebastian Bach on it. Okay. You know, he ended up being a really good friend of mine. 
Mm. He ended up, we, we ended up being really good friends. We, uh, we, he's a mercurial guy and, and I love him to death. He's a great guy. He's a very solid person, but yeah, he didn't appreciate my politics. But anyway, I thought that was <laughs> odd that, that, uh, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, oh gosh, I hope they don't put him on this. And I actually talked to him about it. You know, it was, we, we, we were talking about some stuff. But anyway, it would have worked out, out good. So then I'm going, well, I don't know anybody. Ah, I know Bruce Cool. And so, so I'm sitting there and I'm going, okay, all right, I, I want to do records. I want to do records. I knew I want to do records, you know. I've never pressed a record. I don't know nothing about doing this. So I go to his website and he had, I don't know, 60 copies of BK3. It had been out for a while, you know. Okay. And, uh, and he was selling them, I think, $25 a piece and would sign it for five. Or it was 20 and five, something like that. And so I thought, you know, I know, first of all, number one. So why do I get to do all this stuff with people? Because I solve problems. That's, that's the only reason people work with me is because I solve problems. So I'm thinking I need to solve a problem for him. And so I'm thinking, what if I offered him to buy every one of those records? You know, that's liquid. You know, I would think that'd be good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what, Bruce is a, a, a he's a, he's a very solid guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I approached him with that and he was like, well, that kind of makes sense, you know? And, and he said, you know, I don't know if I want to give you all of them. And again, we we know each other, but don't know each other, you know? So we're, we're feeling it out, you know? Let's, let's give it a try. Right. Well, I'll give it a try and, and, and let's, let's make sure, you know, Tom's on the straight here, you know, which it should be. And uh, so, you know, we, we kind of him to hold on it. And I told him, I said, well, he goes, well, how are you going to sell them? I said, well, I'm, I'm going to sell them on a pre-sale. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to sell them on, on my Facebook group. And I told him about kiss my wax. He joined then, you know, so that was cool having mm -hmm. a kiss member in the group. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very proud. Of it. I've been, been extremely proud about some of the people that we've seen join these groups. It's it's insane. Uh, but anyway, so uh, you know, so so uh, you know, we said we're going to do it, and he and you know, we're trying to figure out what I'm going to pay him and all that. And I, I'm telling him, I said, well, Bruce, I just I just want to make sure I don't lose money on. It. That's really all I want to do on this. And uh, he goes, Well, no, I want to make sure you don't lose money. And he did. He did. He made sure I didn't lose money. I was very inefficient extremely inefficient and that means you're costly you know mm -hmm. that first record so so the first thing i did and listen man, i you know i have a i have a reputation i don't know i necessarily deserve it all i probably earned some of it but you know i don't know people gotta use some common sense sometimes uh i had you know i, I, I say i'm gonna put these 63 records on sale and you know blah 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 bruce's gonna sign them all and so I get some complaints because, uh, well, what if somebody buys all of them before everybody else gets a chance? And of course I didn't have, you know, an internet site. I didn't have a commerce site. I had nothing. And so I thought, okay, all right, all right. So I made an email address up, a Gmail email address. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told everybody I was going to put the notification out with where they would go and all that at a certain time. I did that at the bottom of it. It said, here's the email address. I'm going to take the orders in order that they come in at the email address. And uh, uh, we had, uh, Bruce had, had, because it looked like we were getting some, some action, he found another 30 copies amongst a couple of KISS dealers. Okay. You know, I purchased them from them because it looked like this thing's going to go now. You know, I think we ended up ultimately with 96 or something like that. I'd have to check. Um, but anyway, I could have sold for like 400 of them if, if I'd had them, which was, you know, very encouraging. Uh, and the people that complained about, you know, hey, you, you need to, and listen, man, that was very difficult on me to deal with them that way. They didn't order. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't order the thing. So yeah, I, that was the last, I learned that lesson. I'm not adjusting stuff for that. And I, I realized with this whole process immediately, good Lord, I've got to automate this thing. You know, yeah, yeah. again, I was inefficient. So I need to, I need to attach everybody's, you know, mailing information to, to the, you know, to the, the, um, the mailer. Uh, and I don't want to tape over them. 
because I'm, I just got OCD or something. I just don't want to do it. So I knew that I want to do it on a sticker. Those stickers cost me 45 cents a piece. Jeez. I mean, yeah. And, and should I have done that? Maybe not, but I needed them to look a certain way. You know what I'm saying? You only get yeah. one chance to set your brand, guys. Yes. One chance. Yes. And, uh, you know, I just, that's why I say with Bruce, I kept telling him, my only goal is just not lose money. I want to give the most I can give here and just not lose money because I don't need to make money on this. And, uh, and so again, that's what we went for. But so I'm, I'm having to hand carry all this stuff in the post office purchase of the postage there. They do not like you bringing a hundred packages in like mm. that, man. You know, now, <laughs> now I drop them off in, in, in big bins and all that stuff. In fact, we prefer to do that. So they're not slinging them, but, uh, you know, yeah, just very cumbersome. I, you know, somebody mentioned the other day that they didn't buy that record originally because it was 25 bucks. I think it's what, yeah, so yeah, it was 25. Uh, but he said it was $15 shipping. <laughs> I, yeah. I said, Dude, I'm sorry. I said, that was the best I could do. What, what I mean, you wanted to was, do? Exactly. Yeah, I, I couldn't do any better. So that's been my goal ever since then is keep driving the cost down on this stuff. So, you know, I pass that on to everybody. Because the more I can drive it down, the more stuff I can add to it, you know. But we're having to get really creative now. Uh, you know, uh, I had to, uh, God, I hated doing this, man. Uh, the day after the, pr the sale went on, the United States Postal Service announced they weren't delivering to Australia mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future. Okay. They still are not. These people purchase USPS postage, and they're not delivering there, and it yeah. won't come close to covering another service. So I had to cancel them all. And man, you know, uh, for several reasons, I hated it. Usually Australia is about a third of my orders. Uh, and it's amazing. Uh, and the combination of the horrid economy, their massive postage costs, and some shams that have been pulled by some, you know, KISS fans making their own books and stuff, uh, the, the, the orders pretty well dried up over there. So it's to the point that I know people want the records over there. I got to get them over there. So I'm working with a gentleman. I, I can't reveal it right now. I thought we're really close. We're really close on getting this settled out. And I believe he is going to take the orders on his site in Australia. I'm going to be shipping him, you know, crates of records so that we can get the, the individual costs down. Right. And uh, I think I think we're going to be able to get it to the point that they'll be able to get them for like twenty five bucks shipping from here. Okay. Just going to take a while to get there, you know. We want to switch gears a little bit before uh, we uh, before we close the show and and talk about the uh, the Peter Chris project. So, um, what was the spark that ignited this project to begin with? Well, uh, you know, it's uh, went backwards into it, frankly. So again, you know, I, I've worked with Universal Music and, and uh, they hadn't uh -huh. been in touch for a little bit. And uh, one day I was blue, I get a call and they're looking, they're looking for, you know, the sleeve for Shout It Out Loud from Denmark. They're going to do something with it. And uh, so I said, yeah, I mean, I'll get that for you. Now, you know, I don't have everything, but I know everybody <laughs> that's got everything. So, you know, I got a hold of a buddy of mine, Steve Allen, and uh, we got the, got the scans from him, shipped them out to them. And, uh, you know, he wouldn't tell me what it was for. Of course, we all know now, you know, it was for the 45th, 45th anniversary of it. But before we got off the phone, I said, hey, man, do you, do you remember I, we were talking a couple of years ago that y'all had some kind of a licensing program or something like that? And, uh, and I'm bringing it up to him again because he actually got me set up in it back then. And the dude just dropped the ball <laughs> that he <laughs> set me up with. So I, I had no contact, you know. And I'm not going to beg this guy to go dig in there, you know. But since I got him on the phone, you know, and he goes, oh, yeah, 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 okay. And so he sends an email out. And uh, and so, you know, I'm in. Uh, and, uh, you know, is that, can everybody, no, everybody can do it. You know, I was, I was, admittedly, I got a, you know, a step up because of the work that I'd done with them, you know. Uh, you know, I've never taken a dime from them. I, all, all my payment has been, you know, paraphernalia you know that's mm -hmm. what i wanted so uh you know uh, they they i was given the opportunity so the one guy that uh, you know a couple years ago that kind of dropped it or whatever he did tell me one very important nugget and i i'm not going to share all this with you because i've got some friends that do this same type of thing 
Mm-hmm. And I got some people I ain't friends that do this stuff, so I don't want to reveal too much. But basically, he told me, you can submit anything you want that is on any universal catalog from the United States, which oh. is pretty much everything, you know. Okay. He said, however, however, if you turn in something fantastic that's going to make a million dollars, they are going to tell you thanks, and they're going to take it. And I, so I said, okay. So that's telling me they're not going to give me anything that they can just press and sell. You know, I've got to go after stuff that they can't sell. And so I sat down and I did my list. And, and so I decided when I did the list that every time that I did a submission, I was going to put something outlandish on there as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'll tell you the outlandish one that I put on for the first one. It was uh, Peter Frampton Comes Alive. On a oh. Picture yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. 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 And I thought I said I wanted to do it, you know, so it looked like the lights on the, on the, you know, behind him. And, nice. and of course they denied that almost immediately. And I said, well, that's fine. I said, I knew you were going to, I said, I'm not doing my job if I don't ask like that, you know? So the other ones were within reach. And, uh, uh, of course two of them were the Peter Chris LPs. Uh, I had two more from another kiss associated artist that I was requesting. Okay. And then I had one more from another Kiss Associated artist that I was asking for. And so uh, I guess it was about three weeks after I got the no on the Frampton. I get I get three emails, man. I have out of control. Let me rock you and one of the others. And so I know artists that are on the other. And so I'm hey, I got this deal. We're going to set yeah. up signing. We're going to set up a signing. Hey, you want to do this and all this? We need to be careful. I would do this because of him and this and that. And I had it all set up and they pulled it the next day. The The legal, oh, depart- the legal department said no. Right. And, uh, so, uh, you know, yeah, you all can figure that out yourself, what that was. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes people write themselves out of history. I mean, that's just a fact. So anyway, I get those two and I'm super excited because I haven't pressed a record in a year. You know, my last record that I pressed. Oh, was, my. Very uh, excited. <laughs> yeah. 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 My last one for that was Rockology. And yeah. uh, uh, that was one of the very last records pressed by Rainbow Pressing in L.A. They were the largest pressing plant in the country and they closed down right after that. So mm-hmm. everybody knew that there were going to be issues with pressing plants going forward, you know, mm-hmm. and then COVID hit. Right? So I signed my contracts, uh, Rockology. I, I put my order in. I had my records eight weeks later. So I asked for like, you know, 12 weeks for the release date. And I get it. And then I start shopping around for a record plant because I don't have one now. And uh, everybody is 12 months. <laughs> do what? Oh yeah, well everything. I, I what twelve months? Yeah, 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 what are yeah, yeah, you yeah. talking about? Yeah, yeah, and uh, and that's what it is. And worse than that, we can't talk to you, buddy, if you haven't had a had a record pressed here. You mm. know, and I'm like, holy crap, what right. is happening right. here? Right. And how am I going to deal with this? Yeah. So I started looking at all the other, you know, these other plants and, and, uh, and then finally I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start with third man. Cause they're, they're awesome. And, and I just start there to get my, my turn downs, you know, and I told them what I wanted to press and they, they fit it in. They, they respected it that much. Uh, they were so awesome at third man. Uh, we didn't get to do this, but we had, we had a pressing party all planned out. Didn't get to do it because of COVID. It, you know, just never could clear up enough. Uh, you know, and, uh, uh, I mean, we were going to do a full celebration of the deal and they were all in. So, you know, that's the one good thing that came out of this is that I have found pressing company now, you mm-hmm. know, that I can, I can go with. And I've obviously understand the time frames now it's, it's not, it's not what it was, you know, and it's okay for someone like universal. Cause I'm sure they buy days of pressing time at a time and just, you know, put whatever in there, but. Uh, man, this is this is a tough business now for anybody. it is it is yeah. indeed. Uh, indeed. You know, but let me tell you, you know, kids fans are so happy. You know, uh, I I I see all those posts. You know, of people getting their stuff. You know, like uh, Pask and and uh, 
because people see value, you know, in the, in the ecologist, you know, uh, products, there's always something more, you know, it's not uh, uh, something off the shelf, you know, it's something unique that really, you know, KISS fans appreciate a lot. So uh, yeah, I appreciate well, well, we're that. happy, we're happy, uh, things are going well, we're really happy. Yeah. Well, you know, things are always moving around. We're, uh, uh, you know, we're going to be at the uh, Creatures Fest that's coming up in a couple of months in Nashville, nice. Tennessee. Uh, and uh, Loretta Car Carvella is a good friend of mine these days. She's going to yeah. share. She's going to share our booth. You know, uh, she's nice. going to be there herself. But nice. uh, you know, it's it's going to be really nice to be able to have all all of Eric's stuff there with uh, you know with the Creatures Fest going on. Tom, you want to share with with the audience so what, what are the the current projects that uh, you're working on now? Uh, I know maybe books or more LPs, uh, yeah. Facebook groups, uh, you name well, it. So you're very active. Yeah. Well, we've got we've, we've got the auction group. And like I say, come to the yeah. rockologist and yeah. comment, and we'll get you signed up. Uh, we are we are trying to trying to squeeze out an e version of of the the LP books, which I guess we didn't even show that. So yeah, three volume set. All there. right, there you go. Uh, yeah. It's been very handy for me. I have I've had it electronically forever. <laughs> <I'm hoping laughs> let everybody else have it. Uh, and then uh, we, after that, and that's going to help fund it as well. We're we're working on the next volume. Uh, Mike Stone and myself and Tom Daniels okay. specifically, and then 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 the other admins as well. Uh, they have found hundreds of more variants since since you know which we knew we would find. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's how you found stuff is, is with information, you know? Yeah. So that, that's going on, man. I'm trying not to think too far out, you know, mm -hmm. I really am not. Uh, it's yeah, just, step by know. step. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So Before I got times. Yeah. But Tom, I got to tell you, you know, when, um, when Claire and I were talking about having you on the show, I was, I was excited because for a long time, I just wanted to talk vinyl. You know, I, I just, yeah. I love, I, I have such a fascination with vinyl as you do. Um, I'm not even close to your level, believe me. Um, but it's been such a, such an interesting, interesting listen uh, to yeah. talk about vinyls and, uh, you know, the intricacies of the business and the challenges of getting vinyls out and, you know, all of these variants. It's like there, there's so much involved um, in this particular industry and it's just growing by the day. Closing, you know, um, you know what would you want to say to the fans um, regarding um, the rockologists, well, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. You know, uh, I mean, we just, we just kind of do stuff, and you know, hope that people like it. You know, we, we base it on trying to do stuff that we like, and uh, you know, just trying to, trying to do justice to, to the releases. You know, these things mean a lot to these artists. And, uh, you know, we, that's how we try to do it is, is be as respectful as we can mm -hmm. so that we're presenting stuff in the best possible way. You know, uh, hopefully we don't ever get to the point that, you know, we're, we're putting out garbage, you know, mm -hmm. I just, you know, uh, I, I was really not ever intended to do, you know, just a basic pressing, you know, there's always going to be something special, but of course, you know, the, the fans of Eric Carr show, you know, that uh, I mean, they just bought that that standard up of of, of, of that record, you know, and it was a good value. It was under twenty five yeah. bucks, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so that's what we want to do. Is we you know, I, I my my goal is that every time that you purchase something from us, by by the time that you know inventory's gone, you're making money. You know, you mm -hmm. have something that's gone up in value that people want. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you, you know. Uh, the the most valuable Ace Frehley record it's sitting right back there. That's the yeah. version of it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Bruce's. I believe Bruce's is uh, is the the original pressing. I believe is most valuable Kiss member solo record that is out there. And it's been a while since I've looked at them, but I mean we're talking about these things have gone over two hundred, well over two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, I wish I kept a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did keep one. I did keep one. <laughs> I love it. So, Tom, you know, uh, um, as as Bas was was saying, you know, we were, we we can't thank you enough, you know, for being part of the show. It's been so, uh, you know, uh, informative, and uh, you know, knowing your background and uh, what you what you're doing now, what you went through, you know, it, it brings more more value to to us, you know, knowing all the all the history behind. So again, uh, you know, very, very, you know, we want to thank you very much for making yourself available. You know, your busy agenda 
So uh, that's it. You know, for me, it was a, it was a real pleasure to to have in the show to meet you. And uh, hey, let's uh, when you have the new release, uh, we can do a round two, and uh, we'll we'll be glad to have you in the show again. That'd be great. That'd be great. I hope to announce what it's going to be here pretty soon. Anyway, <laughs> like I said, just to make sure get a few T's crossed. But no, I appreciate you guys having me on. You know, it's uh, yeah, I don't I don't get to talk to people about Kiss. All the time. <laughs> so, you know, it's nice to get that off off you every now and then. You know, we've had we've had several episodes, uh, past episodes about, you know, it's really a great time to be a KISS fan right now because yeah. KISS fans are, are producing products and yeah. quality products. Um, and I got to tell you what you guys, the rockologists are doing is truly quality stuff. And we, whenever we hear an announcement from the rockologist, we get excited because yeah. we know we're going to get something special. Well, man, I appreciate that. So I thank you that. so much for everything you do uh, for KISS fans. Believe me, I can speak for KISS fans around the world. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you, man. I'm, uh, you're time. humbling me. <laughs> <laughs> so to the KISS Army, thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And remember, never stop rocking. Take care, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode, like and subscribe on YouTube or follow us on Spotify, Automatic, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to make yourself heard. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. See you all soon, Kiss Army.